Yeah, so now we're going to talk about what we call the complex prompt. Yeah. So complex prompt is giving multiple parameters in a prompt. So in this case, I might be doing, I might want to change the language. So we're going to do, let's make it humorous. And we're going to make it academic. And well, yeah, we'll keep it in English. So I'm going to tell it to please rewrite the prompt above. using a uh, bullet point list of five reasons she's a good teacher. Um, I will say a good teacher given that Sarah is a new student, a new student in Miami, a new student with from Seattle with the cultural differences, differences there to adjust to, include food, attitudes uh, and, and what you see she's doing and the difference between a simple and a complex prompt is she's adding information that it's then needing to weather. interpret uh, in, in, in the prompt. So a simple prompt is generally uh, it goes out and looks in its storage base and tries to create knowledge uh, and a response. A, a complex prompt is you're feeding it information that it's then adapting and responding to. Oh, and it, this is fantastic. Cross country transition master. As a Miami transplant from Seattle, Sarah faced significant cultural and climate differences. Your knack for guiding her through the transformation from rain-soaked Pacific Northwesterner to sun-loving Miamian has been truly commendable. You've taught her the essential skills such as distinguishing a Cuban sandwich from a salmon roll and adapting to the infamous Miami time schedule. Weather Whisper, this is amazing. Now, this isn't exactly how I would speak. I might like go in and edit a few things, um, but this gives you so much more context. And if you were writing, so somebody said they did a grant proposal or you know they had ChatGPT help with them. You can see your grant proposal, if you do a simple prompt, that's just respond to this grant proposal based on, you know this is what my business is. And if you give it more context, you're going to get a better output. Um, I actually had it write a non-compete agreement. And then I said non-compete, non-disparagement. It gave me a great agreement. And, you know, it's not written by a lawyer and should be looked over, but it did a really good agreement for me yesterday. Yeah. Another example of a complex prompt that I did is I needed to create a teaching guide for one of my courses. And so I loaded a transcript of that session, asked it to summarize the session and then write a guide for how to teach it. And it was a little complicated because ChatGPT limits the number of words you're allowed to paste to roughly 2000 words. Um, it does that to basically preserve computing power. And so I had to take my transcript and cut it up into 2000 word chunks, have each of those chunks summarized in a concise way. And then I had a concise bullet point that was less than 2000 bullet point list of less than 2000 words that I could then load in to create the teaching guide. So that's a complex prompt. And just the, the, the possibilities are amazing. I, I'm a, a former journalist. I've published more than 2 million words. And my dream, which I don't think is that far away, is to load all the words I've ever published into a learning model and then have it be able to write in my voice. And then I was thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I already have that repository digitally. It's my sent mailbox. So I have probably written about 5,000 words in responses and, and emails over the last, you know, seven years running my business. 
imagine if there were a company that had access to my sent mail and were able to scan it and they were really good at generative language creation and could respond to my emails and my voice. Oh, I use Gmail and oh, that company is Google. And oh, you can kind of already do that with a tool called Jasper that you're about to see. So that's what I think is on the horizon. And that's what the next sort of phase of the complex prompt is, is they'll be able to write in your voice.